You asked for it, and now you have it. Here's how the zero point module works, coming up right after this. Hey everybody, I am Taylor and I'm the Stargate Guy, where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. Today is another How It Works episode and we are looking at the Zero Point Module. The Zero Point Module, or ZPM as it is abbreviated, or ZPM if you're from outside the United States, is basically a giant freaking battery. It is a battery that is created by the ancients millions of years ago when they still lived in the Milky Way galaxy and it is one of the most powerful sources of energy that we know about. A single ZPM can hold the Atlantis shield up to protect the city for thousands of years from the weight of an ocean on top of it. A ZPM can have the gate dial intergalactically with no problem, and it can allow for intergalactic travel. But how does the ZPM actually work? Well, according to Dr. Rodney McKay, basically you think of it as a universe in a bottle. Well, not really true. Basically, Radic has a better explanation. It extracts vacuum energy from this artificial region of subspace time until it reaches maximum entropy. Although it is a zero point module and harnessing zero point energy, that's not technically correct. So in order to really find out how this actually works, we're gonna need to dive into quantum mechanics. So bear with me here, this stuff gave me a headache when I started to learn it. So I'm gonna try to explain it so it's easy for you to understand. So things are gonna be a little technically wrong for the sake of understanding, okay? <laughs> so first off, what is zero point energy? Well, if you go to the quantum level, as we understand it, uh, particles act as particles, as fixed points, but they also act as waves, meaning that they're moving. So basically, according to quantum field theory, on a quantum level, everything is kind of shaking. And the weird thing is that they're kind of shaking all at once, kind of with the same frequency. So if you would picture the universe like this, like a sheet of paper like this, it's shaking and it's all shaking as one. Now, since it is all shaking at one, there is no disruption, meaning that we cannot harness that energy. You see, any time that there is a disruption of energy, we can capture that energy. That is called entropy. Basically, take the piston of your car. As the piston goes down, it squishes the air, the gas, and everything down tighter and tighter and tighter together. That uh, pressure builds up, okay, according to the atmosphere around it. It's a lot higher pressure under the piston than it is in the rest of the engine. Now, that means that it wants to release and that it wants to equalize the pressure. So it wants to push the piston up. Basically, that's what entropy is. It is wanting the uh, high pressure and the low pressure to create equilibrium. So when we go back to the quantum field theory where it has the entire universe uh, kind of shaking at the same degree, it is all equal. We can't harness energy from it. But if we pull on it just a little bit, we make a little bit of a wave or ripple. We make that divot there. Now, entropy means that it wants to even out in order to fill that gap. And right there, that is the energy. That is referred to as vacuum energy. You pull on this down uh, with a single point and with it wanting to get all the same again, that difference is vacuum energy. And theoretically, that energy can be harnessed and it can be harnessed from basically empty space, which is really fascinating and, and really exciting once you think about it. Now, how this could potentially be done is with something called the cashmere effect. Basically what this is, is that if you take two plates and you put them really, really, really close together, those waves that we were talking about, some of them get excluded. So there's less waves in between the plates than, and there's more waves on the outside of the plates pushing in. So since there's less pressure on the inside than the outside, they get pushed together. Now, the reason why we can't really harness this energy is because it takes the same amount of energy to pull those plates apart again in order to be pushed back together again. So there's no real net gain there. So when it comes to actually harnessing this vacuum energy, when it comes to actually using the cashmere effect as a practical source of energy, we are not quite there yet. But that is where the ancients were. So basically the, the ZPM has a pocket of subspace within it. And in that pocket of subspace, it is all jiving at the same frequency. Okay, that's zero point energy. 
but the GPM makes a disruption. And within that disruption, more energy wants to fill that in order to have it go back to equilibrium. That creates the vacuum energy, and the GPM takes that vacuum energy and is able to use it to power Stargates, to power Atlantis, to power all kinds of freaking awesome weapon platforms and everything. That is why these things are so cool. We can kind of understand how they work, but we have no way how to charge the battery. We can't do it. We don't know how to recharge this thing. So that is why they're so freaking rare and why they are so meaningful and powerful to the Stargate team, because they are finite and they were made thousands of years ago. And unlike alkaline batteries, they're still good. <laughs> and the only people that can make them nowadays are the replicators in the Pegasus galaxy. They are the only ones who know how to make a ZPM and they're not gonna tell us. So let me know what you would like to have me explain how it works in the comment section down below. And if you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Great videos are coming out every week, just like this How It Works episode or this awesome Stargateness. Thanks to everyone who bought me a cup of coffee this week. You guys are amazing and you help keep the channel going. Link in the description box down below. And until next time, I'll see you on the other side.